Hey everyone, it's your girl Emma Ansa. Thanks so much for tuning into the African Diaspora News Channel. A while back, I reported on a young lady by the name of Vanessa Alexander, who was very severely beaten by her 300 pound white racist neighbor because her dog ran into his backyard. Well, we're gonna catch up with Vanessa, see how she's doing, how she's feeling, how she's healing, and if there are any updates on the charges laid against him. I'm gonna roll the clip and then we'll talk about it. Um, overall, it's it, it's a blessing, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be here and um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I have a lot of supporters and a lot of people that are willing to, to hear my story and the story that actually happens to many people. Mm -hmm. So overall, it, it's good. There's been some ups and downs, but it's a part of the, the self-healing process. So. Shelly, I haven't seen him. Um, it's mainly the, um, the son that I get really negative energy from. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he was following me in his truck um, just last week, um, recording me on his phone. And Are you serious? Yeah, and, it, and it's, it's not, it just puts me in a really bad place. Like, you, know, you start to think, like, what's, what's next? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? You could tell, like, the energy, um, like, there's, like, sending a message trying to intimidate me. I know he was initially charged, and then he was released on bail, correct? Yes, yeah, so I I've, I've fought um, to escalate it. Mm -hmm. um, so on top of him sitting on bodily harm, it escalated to aggravated assault mm -hmm. and the use of weapons, so the, the concrete right. that was um, considered as a weapon because that's where he was bashing my head and that's why I have the, the broken bone under um, my eye. And I've done as much as I can to, to heal on my own um, with remedies and, and treatments and overall like I'm, I'm super grateful and mm -hmm. there's been times that I've I look in the mirror and I and I see myself and I feel great. Dude. I'm sure there are still scars inside and outside. Oh yeah, like my eye, it changes. Like right, I notice during the day and the morning, I yeah. feel like it's his healthiest, and then it gets tired. One one eye will sometimes it looks really small, smaller mm -hmm. than the other, depending on what angle that you're looking at me. Mm -hmm. I've decided to go with the surgery, mm -hmm. so. And this operation is for. Um, for the broken bone that's under my eyes, so that it doesn't change <laughs> its shape yeah. and it can get get pushed forward. Um, everything else with the scarring, I've already, I'm overall, I'm pretty happy with how it's um, healed up, having eight stitches, you know, mm -hmm. and some of my hair grew back because my eyebrows are like one of my favorite features. God is good and um, there are some risk, some serious risk and the, the percentages are, are low. It's been just me, my friends and family trying to support me. There's some people out there, a lot of people have reached out to me after um, the show and told me their story and how mm -hmm. they're alone and they can't speak out and and maybe it's their boyfriend or mm -hmm. maybe it's their girlfriend. And I can only imagine like, how would you do this on your own? Do you think you will ever fully heal from this, uh, from this assault? Yeah, definitely. I've, I've made it a mission that I'm gonna be stronger than the person I was before. Mm -hmm. As much as we don't want to believe it, it's still our responsibility to, to heal and mm -hmm. to get the help. So I'm on the right path. Some days it, it feels like you know, taking two steps forward and, and you're taking one step back, yeah. you know, getting triggered. You know, you mm -hmm. have your healing, you're outside, you're feeling great. And then you have, you know, the son of the attacker following you in the vehicle. Definitely that puts me back in a, in a place of, of, of being scared, you know, feeling unsafe. Mm -hmm. And, and did you contact the police about that? I contacted them. What, they, what did they say? They said it wasn't considered an, a, an emergency. All right, because as soon as I seen that and I seen him recording me, mm -hmm. I had my two puppies with me yeah. on leash. I turned around and I, and I hustled home. Yeah. And I just remember having my, my jacket on for like two hours. And I called my mom, I called my, my family and said like, why is, like, why is he following me? Like, mm. what, is, what does that mean? And it makes my mind start to think like he's sending a message mm. who, who is he sending that video to so it's not considered an emergency you have to call this number um and when i call the next number that's not an emergency the the team that is they're not available till friday that you contact <laughs> so this happened one day so yeah. i had to wait till friday to to talk to somebody and eventually they did come so you know the the lead detective is, is unavailable, so he has a team that's left in his place, and they, they came through and, and talked to me about it. So mm -hmm. thank God I have you know some of the therapists and other um, services to help me get through that. Because it, it doesn't feel good when you're in that place. You mm -hmm. want to feel strong when you're going outside and minding your business and just trying to 
walk your dogs, right? Yeah. There's a lot of self-blame. Like maybe if I just mm. let someone step all over me, maybe mm. if I just didn't say, hey, don't talk to me like that. Mm. Maybe I, would, I wouldn't have dealt with that, mm -hmm. you know? And at the end of the day, it, that's just no way to, to react. You know, that response is, is not how you respond, no matter how angry. Maybe he was mm. having a bad father's day. Yeah. You know, maybe I should have went to the cemetery with my sister and, and paid my respect to my father, but there's just so much things that just go in your head when your mm. eyes are, are shut. This has been a, a crazy traumatic year for you. Yeah. What would you say to him now, looking back where you are now? That was one question I, I haven't even processed in, in my head is what would I ever say to, I guess I just never thought I would ever have to say anything to him. Like it was more of like, I'm gonna stay silent and um, stay humble. Mm -hmm. And for any reason, if he really has issues, personal issues, to just get himself straight, cause that's, that's scary, you know, you can, you can kill somebody. Mm -hmm. Do you have any message for people out there who felt your anger, who felt your pain? Yes, yeah, yeah. a lot of people have reached out and told yeah. me their story and a lot of people have um, has said it's a, it's a great thing that I, I spoke out, you know, being such a long time that I, I came out with it. Um, you know, these things need to, be, need to be told, there need to be services in place mm -hmm. that are more effective, police need to to be more of a supporting system um, and not to be afraid. Like there's people out here that are, are going to support you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I definitely appreciate everybody that has, has, has come through. I, I'm, I'm actually surprised, you know, cause there's so much things going on in yeah. Toronto and the world. And you don't really think your, your story is gonna make a, a difference, but even the smallest, the look, you know, it, yeah. it, it, it comes away. So, I'm definitely happy that I, I spoke out. So as you can see, Vanessa's doing much better. She's fairly healed, still has a ways to go, both physically and emotionally. And you heard that she said that she has to have surgery to repair the uh, fractured bone underneath her eye. So we hope and pray that she will come through okay. Um, I'm happy to hear that she has received a lot of support, both from her family, friends, and you know, everybody that followed this story and heard about what happened to her. It's wonderful to see the outpouring of love that she's received. Now let's talk about Shelly, the 300 pound racist white man that beat her. His son, who has now decided that he's going to be following her around, taunting her, filming her, and how this has triggered her and causing her to have trauma and be fearful. And the fact that this son can be doing this, following her and videotaping her, and then she has to call this random number that's not an emergency, um, and they're not open until the following Friday. I mean, the this is the son of the man who beat her half to death. Let's just put it in context. And he is now following her, videotaping her, and she's calling for help and it's not even triggering to the police officers that this would be an emergency because like Vanessa said, what is he doing with this filming? Why is he following her? This is, this is not safe for her. You know, ideally, we would love for her to move. She still lives next door to this racist. We would love for her to move, but not everybody's circumstances lends for that to happen. She still, you know, has no option but to stay where she is. So hopefully, you know, this goes okay for her and she will be safe. Um, the fact that Shelly has still not done any jail time would probably be why his racist son feels like he has the license to continue to, you know, trouble her. And once again, here we are, the Caucasian protection, the protection for the complexion. And, you know, she's called the police on them. They came, they had a conversation with her, and it goes nowhere. We have to protect this sister. We all have to come together. Let's get a folding chair too soon, maybe. Um, but yes, we need to protect this young lady. 
this cannot keep going on. She cannot keep being taunted by these people. Let me know what you all think about this. Drop some comments in the chat. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next upload. And also subscribe to my YouTube channel, EA Public Relations, where I focus on and feature Black-owned businesses in the Niagara region. Until next time, everybody, please be safe and peace be.